Welcome back to Precisely Nowhere. I can't believe it is 2024 and I hope you're having a great transition into the new year. The fact that it's 2024, I'm still in shock, but in good ways. I don't know about you, but my parents used to say sometimes, or I just heard in shows and movies, how the older you get, time flies by quicker. And I used to think like, that just is dramatic. That doesn't sound like, what, why? But it feels like it does. 2023 flew by and so much happened from moving from New York back home to California and just life, my niece and nephew getting older and my brothers getting older and just life milestones happening for different people. So it is a beautiful thing to think about life and how much happens in a year and how quickly time passes by us, especially if we're not living in the present and being grateful for what we have. So I am carrying on my focus to practice more gratitude in 2024 because I'm finding that it's making me more appreciative for my life and helping me connect with more people and also just inspire other people to practice more gratitude too. I feel like the world could use a little bit more of it. I'm not sure if you've watched the movie Leave the World Behind on Netflix. I love that movie. I've watched it a few times. And the first time I watched it was actually early December. I had a lot of content preloaded and planned and I batched things early. So sneaking it in to talk about just kept getting like falling off the outlines. But I wanted to talk about it still because I think the movie is super interesting. And I like those apocalyptic movies anyway. This one feels like it could actually happen. And if you haven't watched it yet, it stars Julia Roberts, Ethan Hawke, and Meyer Shala Ali. I, I feel like I butchered his name, but it is a great movie. It's from the creator of Sam Eshmael, who created Mr. Robot, if you ever watched that show on USA. The gist of it is a story of two families as they fight for survival. But essentially, there's a blackout that happens and no one can access like Wi-Fi or the internet. And then there's a cyber attack and it follows these two families that cross paths in unexpected ways. But when you watch it, will feel very relatable to the current state of life that we live in. So highly recommend it. It's based on off a novel. I feel like it will be nominated for a lot of awards. I'm excited to see the awards that it gets because the cinematography is pretty kick-ass, the storytelling and the actors. So highly recommend 10 out of 10. And it makes you think about life too, which is what I really, why I really resonated with it. I had no idea what it was about going into it because Marco wanted to watch it, but I was like, sure, why not? I like the cast. It seemed interesting, but it really makes you think like this could happen in real life, not to give spoilers, but I feel like it could happen in real life. It's scary to think that it could happen in real life, but also just the the state of the world right now. And I feel like a lot of us are just going through things and inflation and just cost of living. And everyone has a handful of problems that they're dealing with on a day-to-day basis that the empathy we have towards one another can be minimal or non-existent at times. And I have been there too, but I'm trying to be more conscious of how I'm reacting and responding to people because you never know what someone's going through and lacking empathy and that being normalized. I I just can't see how that could positively impact the world. So (laughs) I'm going to be one of the ones fighting the good fight. I hope you'll join me. And other content that I've watched recently, like over the holidays, Sly, a documentary about Sylvester Stallone, highly recommend. You learn a lot about his life and then also, you know, how he came to be in the Rocky movies and the fact that he actually wrote the script, which I had no idea. So very interesting. 
if you're a fan of him or the movies, it's a must watch. And he has just reignited his career. He has this documentary. I think his daughters and they have a reality show. So he's killing it. I love that for him. Uh, Fantastic Beasts is something I also rediscovered recently because Marco's watched all the movies and I have been behind and I didn't realize they were prequels to Harry Potter and I'm a huge Harry Potter fan so watched all of those movies and I love them that led us to watching Lord of the Rings again love those movies too they're really long so if you've never watched them I think each movie is like two two and a half hours long so get ready when you watch them but if you're into fantasy type movies like harry potter or fantastic beasts you will love lord of the rings i watched it in my 20s so i was not one of the ones that watched it like when they were younger but big fan the citadel is on prime that is really good too that's with stanley tucci richard madden from game of thrones and Priyanka Chopra Jonas. It's a spy thriller. Enough said. I mean, the the cast is great and it's really good. There's only one season. It's a new show, but I highly recommend it. Oh, and it takes place in just different countries. So if you're a fan of traveling and like a spy thriller, this one's for you. Lots of fantasy and thriller movies recently. Not going to lie, Marco has had a hand in picking some of these movies, but I've also just been on a kick for wanting more storytelling to balance out my reality shows like watching Below Deck Mediterranean and Vanderpump Rules. Vanderpump Rules is back. They're slowly trickling out content, and I am recording this in advance because I'm taking a little bit of a break over the holidays, so... There may be more content by the time this episode comes out, but I did see some for the new season and I'm excited because it feels like it's been ages. It's been ages. I need to know what's going on. And speaking of things, knowing what's going on, TikTok. I'm not huge on TikTok, not intentionally. I just don't go on it as much. Luckily, I have lots of people in my life who do and... Tara, who graciously gives me ideas, and they're amazing every time because having a podcast, it is my baby, but it takes a village to do anything. And I am being open minded to when people have ideas or suggestions, especially if they're listeners, because I want to make this content relevant and relatable to everyone that's listening. And 99% of the time, I am doing all the ideation for the outlines and episode topics because it's just me running the show here. I love, luckily have Marco who helps me edit it, but a lot of the ideas are coming from me. So thank you, Tara. But if you are someone that's on TikTok on the regular, you may know about this already. If you're not, I found it really interesting And this concept of third spaces and finding your community is something that's being talked about and how third spaces are good for your mental health and well-being. And a third space is a space that's outside of your home and outside of your job. So that could be a social activity. If you go to a bar or restaurant to play trivia, let's say every week, like I've done before when I was in New York, or if you partake in an intramural team or league, like I did kickball for a few years and made so many friends do that. And you can do them seasonally or year round. It varies on the state that you live in. Things year round like aren't doable because of the weather, but look into it. There are lots of organizations out there that have intramural leagues from bowling to softball, lots of trivia as well. I love a trivia and I found a trivia place near Marco and I that we went to trivia for over Halloween and it was so much fun. Happy hours used to be a third space for me when I was in my early 20s working in New York and working at NBC. I was happy hours were a thing for a lot of my jobs up until probably post-COVID when I started working from home. 
I would have a less happy hours because I wasn't at the office already, like easily able to like, okay, let's all go get drinks. Now, some of us are commuting from different places, but happy hours can be really fun too. And lots of deals. Local bars or restaurants. I love being a regular somewhere. And there was a restaurant when I lived in New York in East Harlem. Shout out to East Harlem Bottling Co. The restaurant was down the street from my apartment. I lived there when the owners like bought the space and renovated it and really made it like a little pub. So it was beautiful to see it, the space transform and to support a local entrepreneur and become a regular there. It just, I feel like it could really help give you a home away from your home. And that is the beauty of a third space. It doesn't have to always be a home away from your home, but it's a safe space outside of the other safe spaces, hopefully, that you have. Because, you know, hopefully your home is a safe space and your job is a safe space. Whether you like whether you like your job or not, hopefully it's a safe space. And if it's not, let's maybe reevaluate that. It's 2024. It's time for, you know, new habits and challenging ourselves. The gym is also a great third space. Marco goes to the gym every day and he has gym friends. My mom has some gym friends that she's met through her running clubs. So just getting out there and having conversations with strangers is probably the most important thing when you're in a third space. Opening yourself up to talk to people that you don't know, push yourself out of your comfort zone a bit because you're not going to just make connections without making an effort. Sometimes it's going to take an effort. So it starts with you and you're in the driver's seat so you can do it. Just get over the awkwardness if you're feeling awkward. I've been there, but now I'm just like, what do I have to lose? And if someone looks interesting or cool and you're like, I like their vibe, talk to them. You never know who you're going to meet and connect with. So don't overthink it. Just start the conversation. Volunteering is also a great place to have a third space and you're giving back as well, which is a beautiful thing. Um, Parks are a great third space that I have loved over the years, especially living in New York when you don't have that much private like outdoor space always because we live in apartment buildings that don't always have, you know, private outdoor space. So parks for hanging out during the summer, you know, having picnics with your friends. I love those as third spaces. So if you're somewhere that doesn't necessarily have huge parks where you can easily like go and hang out. Think about how you can, or even private space because you live in an apartment in the city or even an apartment in the suburbs. Think about how you can leverage the open free spaces around you to connect with people. And maybe you'll have to facilitate that like first or second event, but you never know like after facilitating it, whether more people are going to want to get together and help initiate things on their own. So don't be afraid to be the person that makes the plan because you're making it for you and to connect with other people. Um, And connecting with people that you work with as well. I'm huge in having boundaries and not feeling pressure to be friends with people you work with. But also if you happen to meet some people that you work with and vibe with them personally outside of work, I think that's awesome. I have so many friends, great friends that I will have for life that I met through work because I saw them as a human being outside of their role that they, you know, had in their corporate job or whatever kind of industry you're in and connected with them on a human to human level. And you never know who you're going to bond with through that. So Don't be afraid to push yourself out there, talk to strangers, let someone in a bit. I don't think you can go wrong. Being friendly definitely helps. And just getting out of your house and experiencing life. And this is something I'm finding is a struggle a bit for me and a lot of people I talk to because especially if you work from home and are remote, you get so used to just being home all the time. And if you're a homebody, you're in heaven like me, but it is still good to get out and experience life, 
go on a walk, go to your local farmer's market, get out of the apartment or house that you're in and connect with human beings still outside of like a digital screen. So that is something I plan to continue to try to do in 2024 because it came so naturally when I was in New York because I had to take the public transportation to get most places and I'm just always out and about in New York. And now that I'm in the suburbs, my life has changed in that sense. And I am finding new ways to still connect with people outside of my apartment. And it's a bit of a challenge, but totally doable. So finding something outside of work, I think, can really help with our overall well-being and mental health. And I used to think to myself, why would I do this? And what am I going to, where am I going to find the time? Which was a valid question to ask myself back then. And for anyone who's thinking about it now, a valid question to ask. But having a hobby and an outlet outside of a nine to five job is also a valid thing to have and give you, gives you a sense of purpose outside of your job. And this is going to vary depending on what you do for a living. But in my experience, you know, I went to NYU for undergrad. I graduated and immediately started working. Fast forward eight years later, I'm still working. And along the way, I have had hobbies from crafting, kickball, trivia, hanging out with my friends, happy hours. All of these hobbies have helped keep me grounded and push me to grow in new ways because I am was meeting and experiencing life in different ways than my how I was experiencing it in my job. So I think that this is based on my experience personally, but I also know like if you're an entrepreneur or self-employed, your perspective might be different. I'm not there yet where I have full freedom over all of my time. So while I'm juggling a nine to five and have my limited free time outside of that, I think that hobbies are a great way to make it possible for you to have a third space and find and connect with your community. And I've seen the light and we'll never go back. (laughs) It sounds dramatic and it is, but I am a huge advocate for third spaces. And I love that it's being talked about on TikTok because it's totally normal for people to have have something going on outside of their house and outside of their job and they should so that they have a sense of purpose. And I can say that all of my hobbies from time to time have given me a sense of purpose or excitement or just something else in my life where I am growing in a different way, making the most of each day. So I hope that you find your third space if you don't have one. And that could be at your house, but maybe you have a greenhouse or maybe you're gardening. I also don't want you to feel pressured now that on TikTok we're talking about third spaces. Everyone has to have a third space or else you're not taking steps towards your mental health and bettering it. It's not the case. Third spaces aren't for everyone, but I do think that they can help make us well-rounded and help us find that harmony that a lot of us are searching for. And so the holidays have gotten me in a really reflective mode. I think part of it is because it's the first time that I had to spend the holidays away from New York in years. Like usually I go home to California for Christmas for like a week or two and then I come back. So I have a good amount of time where I'm in New York and just experiencing New York during the Christmas time, holidays, New Year. And this year is new for me, but I have tried to embrace each day and look at it like I'm building new traditions and New York is always going to be there and I will be going back in June. I'm super excited. My best friend, one of my best friends is getting married and I can't wait to visit New York and bask in the New York summer a bit. I'm going to try to go for maybe a week so I can have a little downtime to 
experience the city on my own and with Marco, hopefully, and just enjoy it because it's been too long since I've enjoyed it and I deserve a small little vacay. So I'm super excited to see old friends and reconnect with people. It will have been almost a year since I left and it's crazy to think how quickly time flies and that it could be a year since I've been in New York, like truly been in New York to enjoy it. So I am wanting to make it a promise and goal to myself to go back at least once a year, every year. It's a special place. It was my home for 12 years. So I want to be able to appreciate it now as a tourist, uh, even though, you know, once a New Yorker, always a New Yorker. But really just appreciate it and go and see, you know, museums that I love visiting and Bryant Park and cute little restaurants that I used to frequent. So I am very nostalgic for the city right now, but very grateful to be in California with my family. And the holidays have been so special already. I can't believe it's the new year. I... We'll have updates in the next few episodes on people that I have reached out to to interview. More to come with what to expect for the rest of January. Lots of great content ahead. And I just want to keep bringing you quality content, helping inspire you to take baby steps towards living your ideal best life and feeling your best, especially because it's the new year, the world is our oyster, and normalizing being positive. There's a lot of pessimism out there in the world. I don't need to add to it anymore. I've already been pessimistic for a lot of years of my life, so I'm drinking the Kool-Aid of being positive and encouraging everyone to go after their dreams, live their best lives, take time for self-care. It's so important. It's going to be a wild year, lots of good things ahead. And I love you all for listening. Thank you again for being so great. I can't believe we're in the 50s now, episode-wise. I am so appreciative of you all. And I am so excited to keep growing with you in 2024. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Talk to you soon. Bye. Music and editing done by Marco. You can find him at midnight, M-I-D-N-I-T-E underscore mind eight zero on Instagram for more of his work.